Hello and welcome to Dave's Delightful Dishes. As always, I'm Dave, and what a delight it is to have you here on this holiday evening. Today, we're going to make a, an appetizer for your holiday get-together, and it's one that's going to make the people cheer. We're going to do French dip roll-ups with an au jus. Cool, huh? It's going to be a great idea. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the, uh, with the roll-ups part. So here's the ingredients. We have deli roast beef and provolone cheese. About a half a pound of the roast beef and eight to ten slices of cheese. We'll play it by ear based on how things look when we're doing it. Uh, we have two tablespoons of butter, salted, and two kind of medium to large onions sliced thin. I have two sprigs of thyme that are still attached to their, uh, their stick. I have... Salt and pepper, which we're going to do to taste, uh, but I've got about a, you know, about a teaspoon and a half of each in there, so I can add that as needed. And then I have two teaspoons of uh, thyme leaves that I've taken off of the stems, and I give just kind of a light little chop just to kind of break it up a little bit more. And then I have two rolls of crescent dough, two cans of it, which we're going to work with once we get the, uh, the ingredients ready. So first step is I put these down. Second step is we're going to head over to the cooktop. Oh, and by the way, I have a 350 degree oven going. But we're going to go over to the cooktop because we've got to saute ourselves some onions. I'll see you there. Okay, we got a hot pan, and I just put that two tablespoons of butter on. And we're going to let that melt real quick. Just get it started. Oh, I can hear that shrieking too. Oh, that's nice. We got a nice hot thing. Let me turn it down a little bit. And we got a bunch of onions here, but they will reduce. There we go. So we just got to keep working these around. And just like every other time we've done onions on this show, we're just going to sweat them up and we're going to we're going to work them for a couple of minutes until they uh, until they turn translucent. And then we'll move on and start adding other things. But this is probably, with this many onions, I'm going to say this is going to take, you know, maybe three or four minutes at the most. So we're going to keep working these. I'll get back to you once they're golden brown and soft. Okay, now that things are starting to reduce and get, um, you know, getting caramelized, you see it's already fitting in the pan a lot better. Now I've got to add these two sprigs of thyme. And we're going to kind of mix them in. because we want them to give up their flavor as well. And I'm going to put in about half of that teaspoon. So it's about a half a teaspoon of pepper and about a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're mixing that all in so that it gets combined. And then here's the plan. What I want to do is I want to keep this going low and we're just, I mean, kind of medium-low heat. But we want this to keep this going for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes until it's really golden and caramelized and all, the, and all these uh, onion slices are super soft. So you can see what it looks like right now. And then when we get back, you're going to see what it looks like when we're ready to move on to preparing the sandwich part. All right, now that's golden brown, huh? So this is caramelized. That's what we're looking for. Don't worry about these sprigs. We're going to take them out because they are done. We've gotten our flavor out of them. And this is ready to come off now and go into a bowl. Unless you want to just bring your, pa your pan right over to the workstation. But I happen to have a bunch of stuff on there, so I'm just going to get this all where I need it. All right, I will see you back over at the workstation. Let's make a sandwich. Okay, so as you can see, I've rolled out two of the, uh, you know, with the one tube's worth, which is two of these uh, longer squares. And I've got them rolled out and ready to go. 
I've taken all the little serrated edges and pinched them together. So I've got one long dough. And the first thing I got to do is I got to take some of the onion, which is still quite warm, but that's okay. It's going to go in an oven next. And we start at this end and we're going to spread it along, but I want to leave a gap at the end over here. So we've got a little bit of overlap so I can seal. And we're just making a thin layer of onion which we're going to spread all across, right, just like that. And do it on the next one. And it doesn't need to be very thick. Perfect. And now we just take some roast beef and we're going for coverage i chose these little round pieces because i like this cut at the at my uh deli counter but most of the time you're going to find like a larger piece of roast beef so however you got to lay it out to get coverage i want to get one layer down first Perfect. And now I got to take some provolone. And you can use whatever cheese you like, but my wife likes provolone, so that's what we're getting. And to make it fit, you may have to take a slice and break it in half. Just like so. Because we want coverage. And you see, this really isn't a very hard process. It comes together pretty quickly. There we go. That's perfect. And now we got to roll them. So you grab this end, and you just start rolling it over. And I lightly floured the base, just, you know, this, this uh, pad that I'm on, just to make sure that nothing sticks. And then that would be right over there. Here comes the next one. And just getting it to keep rolling. Get it to keep rolling. Because remember, this is all going to bake, so it, it'll come together. Perfect. So now i got to make the other two, and then I'll get back to you for what our next step is. Okay, now that those are all rolled up, we need to cut them into quarters. So I cut them in half. And then half again. And then we put these vertically in a 9 by 13 baking sheet. Or baking, uh, baking dish. Just like that. And depending on how big your party is, you can make you can make this to fill the entire nine by thirteen. I'm just making this many because it's uh, I don't have a lot of people coming over. But double this recipe up if you're going to have a bunch of people. It's this is a uh, you're not going to have leftovers no matter how many you make. This is going to be very very popular. All right, last one. And I actually have an extra bit of dough. I may just make one more roll so I can fill this. Uh, so I can fill this baking sheet. So I will get all that taken care of, and I will see you back in a moment. Okay, as you can see, there's some nice pinwheels there. They're all laid out, and three t three cans did a full nine by thirteen, and that's giving you eight, sixteen, twenty four portions. So you can figure out how many you how you know how many you want to have out. Maybe you'll do double. You'll double this up. 
may, perhaps, however many you need for your party. But now that that's there, I've got that kind of chopped up thyme leaves, which we're just going to kind of sprinkle over the top. Very nice. And then this is going in that 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. Okay, so while that's cooking, we got to get the au jus going. Now, the, uh, this is really pretty easy as well. It's just a couple of ingredients, and then we got to simmer it on the cooktop. So we start off with a tablespoon of butter and a clove of garlic that you've minced, a cup and a half of beef broth, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> How much of that do you need? Hard to say. You've got pepper and salt again to taste, but I mean, I would, I've got that half teaspoon left from before, so that's probably going to be what we go into each of them. And then a quarter teaspoon of chopped thyme leaves, fresh thyme leaves. So all that is going to go, and we're going to get that on the stove to simmer. And then thinking about things for as far as how you're going to, you know, deal with them at your, uh, you know, on, on your uh, platter. If you have something like this, like a, like a little mini crock pot, once you've got this, once you've got the ajou ready, you can transfer it to this, and then it'll stay warm throughout the throughout the evening as your guests are enjoying it. So if you don't have one of these, you might want to consider it. It actually came with that white one that you see me use all the time in my other recipes. Uh, you know, you can check. There's like several brands, but they're worth having. Okay, I'll see you over at the stove so that we can make our au jus. All right, we've got that on high heat, and I got to put this tablespoon of butter in. And once that gets a little melty, which is only going to take a couple seconds, let me get myself a new spoon rest here. Yeah, we can't tell it's the holidays or anything. All right, that's melting up nice. Let's put our clove of garlic in that's been minced. As you can see, I use prepared garlic. Generally, I do, although I certainly have fresh garlic if I need it. And we're just going to let that do its thing for a couple of seconds here. It'll start giving off an aroma very, very quickly. And once it does, I'm going to add the beef broth, the Worcestershire, the salt and pepper, and that quarter teaspoon of thyme. Give it all a good stir together. And we're just letting this come to a simmer. So it's... Uh, Probably going to be, you know, five to eight minutes, depending on how long your water takes to boil, if you know what I mean. Uh, once this is simmering, we're going to put it into a container on the side, either that crock pot or something else, so that people can be ready to dip. So it's been 35 minutes, and these are now done. So what we got to do is we got to figure out plating. Now... It's just me and the wife tonight, so I'm going to use a small plate. But if you were having a party, you know, maybe something like a uh, like a chip and dip would be good. Or just a platter with, you know, maybe this in the middle. But if I do the chip and dip, because people are only going to dip these things one time, you could put your, uh, you could put your au jus in the middle and then have those sandwiches around, maybe some garnishes to make it, make it prettier. Just something, just a thought. So my first step is to take my container. I'm going to get my au jus out of here. And I'm going to fill this, not all the way up, but a good portion of the way up with this really, really good smelling au jus. Who knew it was that easy to make? And then we're going to take a spatula. Try to get under a couple of these guys. Pull them away and place them down and around. Now 
and some of them are crispier than others. Just gonna take a little effort on my part. There we go. And they slide in. I slide some more. And these are fresh out of the oven, so you're gonna want to let them kind of sit for a couple of minutes once you put them on, once you plate them, before you put them out, so people do not scald themselves. Because believe me, they will. All right, we're gonna call that good, just so I don't overcrowd it. And then, you know, kind of arrange them out. And I'm not gonna tilt this to you, but I'll get a picture for later. This is really quite delightful. All right, so I hope you all have a really happy holiday. I hope you try this or something like it, and let me know how it came out for you. Enjoy yourselves. Have a wonderful time. Hey, remember, hit like and subscribe, and you, you can chat, you can find the ingredients in my description, as well as links to the Facebook page for Dave's Delightful Dishes, which will give you updates and behind-the-scenes stuff and kind of let you know what's going on. So have a wonderful evening. Have a happy holiday. And I'll see you soon. And remember, Merry Christmas to you all, and for all, a good bite.